What's up, witches? What's up? How's it going? Hope you guys have been doing well. So today is October 18th, the day before my birthday. And we have you just dis- stole some of my thunder. I was gonna I was gonna say happy birthday on the recording. And of course I didn't say anything because I wanted it to be like a that's okay. Do you want happy to start birthday, over? my love. No, no, because oh. it still wouldn't be Do you wanna start over? Like so then so what's she saying, ladies and gentlemen and witches <laughs> of all ages? Um you would just pretend. Like we would do a skit. Okay. We want to be like some of those others no. that do skits. Okay, good. Well, no. Although but... some of them are funny, yeah. and they're well thought out and planned. <clears throat> Excuse me, I became I, I got into puberty again for a second. Anyway, what's up? Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Now, rule that I have is from the day of your birthday. At whatever point in the month that it is, your birthday ends when the month ends. So if you were born on the 1st, <laughs> have fun, but be careful. Be safe. You know, middle of the month, you still got... So, yeah, so you've got the whole, what, 10 days left? 11 yeah, days? Something like that. Left to celebrate? 12 days, Yeah, actually. Um, sorry, the math part of my brain wasn't working. So I hope you guys have been doing well. Um, tonight we're going to be doing, uh, or talking about, uh, not doing, but talking about, uh, love spells, uh, per a request that we had from Natalie Clay Schultz from the Plantology podcast. Um, and cord cutting. Yes. So love spells and cord cutting. Um. Would you like to begin? Okay. Well, which one do we want to start with? Should we go ahead and start with the? You know, I'm I'm getting I'm I'm really even though what we've had maybe five viewers, um, I know it's been a little bit more than that, but um, I'm feeling the energy, especially from her because she specifically asked for it. I'm feeling like just start with the love spells. Okay. Well, before we actually get down to the nitty gritty of love spells. I'm going to start with a couple caveats. There are some ways that love spells can go wrong. Oh, completely. (laughs) And utterly. Yes. So one of them is that it just doesn't work at all. It can either fizzle out or it's not what you're supposed to be doing at that time. And one of the ways that I make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing is that before I cast a spell, I will actually do a divination either with my tarot cards or my pendulum to ask, you know, am I supposed to be doing this right now? And I will usually ask the question like three different ways, like reword it, but ask the same question three different ways. Because here's the thing. If the answer comes up the same way all three times, then I know that, okay, that's my answer. Like, if I'm told no all three times, then I know, okay, it's a no. Like, you know, if, okay. if, it, if I get the same answer two of the three, mm-hmm. then it's still a no. Like, if I'm told no, it's still a no. Mm-hmm. But if I'm only told no once, then I'll ask, like, okay, so what about this wording? Like... Is there something specific I need to focus on here to make it a yes or to make it a more solid yes? Okay. And then try and figure out like what it is that I'm supposed to be doing to get what I want. But every single time I've done the divinations beforehand, when I ask the three questions that are just worded slightly different, but they're the same question... Every single time, the answer has always been the same every all three times. Right. So it's not like there's any wiggle room for me. It's just, no, bitch, don't do it. <laughs> you know? Or, yeah, go ahead. You know, like, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Right. So there's, you know, it just doesn't work. 
And that could be because you don't have enough power behind it. Like you haven't raised enough energy. It could be because it's just not supposed to be what you're doing. It could be your correspondences are completely off, which um, a lot of times I've seen people say, as long as the intention is there, like it, it'll work, which is not necessarily true. Right. We have correspondences for a reason. You know, plants have certain energies. Crystals have certain energies. And if you try to work against those, you're pretty much putting obstacles in your path. So if you're using the right correspondences and you're raising enough energy and your intention is clear and concise, then your spell is most likely going to work as long as, and this is caveat number two, most love spells out there target a specific individual, which goes against free will. Now, it could be that their will is so strong that your spell is just not enough to bend them. But there is also the possibility that they are protected. There's also the possibility that if your spell did come to fruition, you could end up seeing a side of that person that you didn't know existed. It could lead to things like abusive relationships, obsessive relationships, stalking, stalking, abuse. Yep. Um, and all the crazy shit you see in the movies. Yeah. You just like it can it can lead to all that. Yes, definitely. Um, another thing is that let's say your spell does work. And you, like, you did target a specific individual, they did fall in love with you, and everything's great. But then you're always going to have that little seed of doubt in your head that what if they only like me because of the spell? Like, do you really want to go through a relationship with that thought in your head? So... Then ending it would also be more difficult. It right. would take a lot more than just a cord cutting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway. Which leads to another... The other topic. Uh, another thing that... Well, another caveat is that your spell could end up not working at all. Like, they don't, they don't fall in love with you. They don't even like you. But somehow you create a cord that ties you to them. Which can only be diminished by doing a cord cutting. Right. And if you don't realize that you created a cord between you and this person, you can end up going through many incarnations where you guys come into each other's lives, but never end up together, but you're always tied to each other because of that cord you created by... Casting an ill-advised spell. And love spells have been around for millennia. Right. I mean, the ancient Greece did them. Uh, mm -hmm. Or ancient Greeks, excuse me. Uh, in medieval times. I mean, I'm sure there probably were even in Sumerian times. They were doing magic mm -hmm. back then. They had shit happening and stuff going on. So the spells, love spells have been around a long time. During those time periods, they pretty much were, like, bending the person's will. Right. Um, but you can also, you know, there are multiple forms of love spells. I yes. I mean, quite frankly. I mean, it's not just targeting an individual right. and making them love you um, just because they smiled at you once in, once in the elevator or even somebody that's been your friend for 20 years and you want more. Um, you're not targeting one per. You're focusing with these other spells. You're focusing on yourself, right. like, like the the reality <coughs> or the the concept or saying that you can't love somebody else until you love yourself. I, I don't know that I completely agree with it, because that person that you love could help you learn to love yourself. Um. 
but there is some basis there is some fact to that um so you could do a spell for you know treating yourself better um to attract love and joy to your life um and that love could be in many forms i mean if you're just doing a broad statement like that it could come in many forms it could be um somebody that you 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 know best friend from high school 30 years later they like find you and like this was literally your road dog your best friend um you know that love couldn't be replaced by anything you know um or a sibling that you know for whatever reason you guys split apart you know it could mend those uh relationships right um or any number of things, friendships, you know, and so on and so forth. So um, there are love spells that can help you um, to be the person that you're looking for. Right. So then you can find the person that you need or want. Right. So there's the spells where you target another person. There's spells where you just put it out there that you are wanting love. That you're inviting love into your life and not necessarily targeting a specific person. There's self-love spells. One thing you have to really be careful about, though, is that with the inviting love, you have to specify human love. Because if you don't, you could end up with a new pet. Or a story like Catherine the Great. Wasn't it Catherine the Great? The Russian? Never mind. It's dark. She apparently died with a horse on her. Yeah. One of the Catherines, one of the Catherines, it may not, so I hope I don't piss somebody off by saying Catherine, but it, there was a Catherine that, Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, you don't want that yeah, either. You don't want that either. Um. I know that just got really dark. That's okay. <laughs> okay. So anyway... Um, some of the typical ingredients that you would find in a love spell, whether it's a self-love spell or to invite love or sometimes even to target a specific person. You would, can tell we're not really for that. Yeah, no. we. I don't like working against free will <clears throat> um, or targeting people simply because, okay, full disclosure, I have actually done a love spell where I targeted a specific person. Not only did I not get what I wanted, but they ended up hating me. Like full, yeah, he ended up hating me. Um, so yeah, probably just best not to do those. Um, work on yourself, you know, be a better person. Be the person that you would want to be in love with. But it doesn't mean you can't use magic to bring loving relationships into your life or make your current ones more loving. True. Um, there are things like uh, sweet jars, I think is what they're called, to like help build your relationship and make it more loving. Right. Um, there are things like harmony powder that you sprinkle around the house so that everybody gets along better. Right. I use that at... At your mom's. Yeah, at my mom's. <laughs> um, but typical love spell ingredients are going to be things like um, either red or pink candles, rose petals, rose quartz, sugar. Rose quartz also between the, um, not to again go to the sexual aspect of it, but if you put rose quartz um, in between your mattress and your box spring, um it's supposed mm. to help bring that energy to you. Just throwing it out there. I mean, this is part of love magic. Should I be checking the mattresses for rose quartz? We don't need it. I've never. <laughs> but I did have, I had one at each corner. Like, you know, the whole concept of north, south, east, west. Even though it was not, you know, lined up that way. But, um, like, yeah. I, I had a piece of rose quartz. I also did, because I was a freak about bringing um, just the harmony of love. Mm -hmm. Like, I used to do um, 
uh, parties, pool parties, like once a month at my apartment. And then we started, and then it started to turn into, um, uh, there was this um, SingStar, I think it is. It's a game for the PS4. Um, it's basically um, karaoke, okay. but you're competing against the actual video of the artist doing the song. Ah, so it okay. adds a whole different level and some nostalgia. So we that it turned into that, and then you know a week long, week long, a weekend long uh, Star Wars fest. I mean, it just of so. But my point is, is like I wanted to bring that kind of energy to my home, so <clears throat> I made up little baggies. Old behavior, I know, <clears throat> but I made up little baggies, and each one was a piece of citrine and a piece of rose quartz. I made up like 20 of them and I put one baggie in every corner of the house or the apartment, every single corner. Um, and it just changed the feeling of the whole place. Uh, so anyway, I got, we're up getting off subject. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. The, but that happens with me. You know that already. Yes. Yes. Anyway. So no, we're not actually going to do a love spell tonight. If, you, as long as I, well, I'm going to speak for me. Okay. As long as you don't want one that's specifically to affect purposely and directly an individual, you send that out to us, we can whip something together. Um, but to be honest, Besides the research that we've done and the notes that we've taken, those notes are from research that we've done or books that we've read, um, which most of which are Google. You can find them on Google. You can find passages, recipes, um, right. <clears throat> spells, the whole process, a full on ritual, because um, there's, you know, cleansing of your space, the space that you're doing it in, cleansing of your body and mind. Um, you know, if you're doing a love spell, like you said, pink or red mm -hmm. candles, but you need to charge them too. Uh, I mean, you could just pull out a candle and use it like that. But if you really want to use what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not just power, but the energy around you that's created by everything around you, um, then you need to get yourself and that object into that space. Um, <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me, getting yourself there first so then you can send that energy into, let's say, the candle, like your intent, like we talked about. I mean, it's not the only thing, but right. if you don't have like a powerful intent, nothing's gonna freaking happen. Right. Like if you say, oh, yeah, you know, I just, I just, um, I want, you know, I want to make five dollars more an hour, and I want a new job. But a, you don't do anything about it, and b, you're not more specific. Like, what do you want to be doing? Yeah, what do you, what do you want to be doing? Or is there a specific company you want to work for? Right. Like you, you know, don't break it down to like I did some. Once upon a time, I did do a love spell, but it was not to bring a specific person to me, but a specific type of person. Um, you know, no, it wasn't the, you know, six foot blonde or five foot five or five foot four um, blonde or brunette or redhead, you know, shaped like this or so. No, it was, it was um, personality and character traits. And a couple other things that I will just leave out of this uh, podcast because they're kind of personal. But I wasn't talking about a specific person, just a particular type of person. Um, and I basically, it, I didn't do a ritual or anything like that other than I would focus on during meditation or like right before I go to bed, just think about that so that's the last thing I'm thinking about before I fall asleep that's what I'm putting energy into um, and then I don't know it was like 
maybe a year or two later, I met you. Now that was the second time that I did it. I also did it once. I did that spell um, probably when I was in my 40s, but I wasn't really ready for anything. So nothing happened. Again, going back to you of, of you yourself being ready to receive and give love. Right. So anyway, again, I got off track. <laughs> That's okay. Um, one of the other things I did want to mention is that your intention does have to be very clear and very concise. You cannot be wishy-washy about it. Um, I've had many, many people ask me for spells that would make somebody think about them and only them. Oh my God, why do you want an obsessive compulsive freaking stalker? But <clears throat> not necessarily have that person in their life. You cannot oh, I have it that. both ways. Yeah, I remember that. You can't. Okay. You, you, you can't. Because if you're wanting them to think about you and only you, they are going to find a way to be in your life, whether you want them to be or not. And it leads to obsessive behavior on the target's part. It could lead to them stalking you, potentially harming you. So you have to be very, very clear about what your intention is. If you don't know what your intention is, don't do the spell. If you're going to be wishy-washy about it like that, just don't do the spell. Okay? It's for your safety that I'm saying that. Because I have actually seen people do those spells and then end up getting hurt. And I don't want that from for you guys. You know, I... Yes, I want to be putting love out into the world, but I want the love to be consensual, I guess. Um, I would hope so. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, just wanted to, to put that out there. Um, other ingredients that you might see in love spells would be things like bay leaves, um, orange peels, pink Himalayan sea salt, um, we already said rose petals, rose quartz. Oh, and basil and clear quartz. Um, those are, I've seen those used in quite a few love spells too. So. Okay. Do you want to talk us through cord cuttings? Sure. So, um, you know, hey, you did a love spell and didn't exactly go the way you wanted it to. Um... Not only could you uh, have created, like she had mentioned, created the cord with the person, but let's say you didn't do a love spell, you actually had a relationship with um, somebody that was not manipulated, um, well, with magic, anyway. Um, but it just didn't go well. Right, you know, one, two, 15 years later, whatever, um, and you just can't seem to shake them, shake the individual, um, whether it be randomly running, randomly running into them in public, or just they pop into your head constantly. Um, both things that make you laugh and things that drive you nuts. Um, And you just need to move on. There are ways to cut those ties. I mean, there's multiple, multiple methods of doing this. Um, honestly, we could do an entire show just on the various cord cutting, um, especially if we actually went through with one. Right. Um, <clears throat> um, you know, I've mentioned authors before, like Scott Cunningham. Um, any, just about any. Uh, I'm sh I think there's even one in Bucky's Big Blue Book. I mean, I think his is more ceremonial. Right. It's, it, and it's more, it, but it could be considered a banishing spell too. Um, but anyway, so like I said, there are many different ways of doing a cord cutting. 
um, the most common, uh, I think, are two. First being um, using candles. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, it, uh, they, they recommend black, and, and not because anything's dark or anything, but black is a very powerful color because yes. it contains all the colors. Um, and it's good for a lot of things. So right. anyway, um, a, two black candles and a strip. Pretty simple, right? Um, and I'll explain more on that one in a moment. But then there's also uh, actually like binding yourself. Um, you have to write out your own, what you're gonna say. Um, and how you're going to say it because I, I don't know the specifics on your situation um, it doesn't have to rhyme I know we talked about that already but right. um, hell if you can make it rhyme but it doesn't have to um, especially not all the way through but anyway I, I know some people get hung up on the rhyming that's why I'm getting a little hung up on it because even I did to a certain degree uh, <laughs> at first um, recite what you've previously prepared um, however many times you feel you need to whether you just do it once and, and with a knife or scissors but make sure whatever you use cuts through quickly and evenly well even doesn't really fucking matter but cuts through quickly Right? You don't want to have a situation where you're kind of sawing, going like this with the knife, trying to cut it, um, or scissors, like you know that cease that that back and forth, like it's also a saw, you know, because you can't get cut all the way through. You want it to be quick, um, because that would imply, if it's difficult, that would imply that the cords that bind are stronger than you currently are the magic you're currently doing um, so you want that you want your tools to be prepared be sharp you want your your knife to be sharp um, and do that and depending on how much energy you put into it um, and preparation you will feel a noticeable once either any of these um, you will feel a noticeable um, yep. release uh, and and freedom uh, once you're done uh, and then there's also the third um, that I'm going to mention is the just pure visu visualization sorry that's that, that word always gives me a hard time um, during meditation uh, you create an image of the individual sitting or standing in front of you and you visualize uh, the, a, a cord of light uh, between you, whether it be from heart to heart, or you know, mind to mind, or just you know, if you feel like you know the old ball and chain, you could be from the ankles. I mean, you know, what, however you you know you want to visualize it, um, and then you know, focus on breaking that link and then visualize yourself cutting it with a pair of scissors. Um, so that one, um, you will, uh, in my opinion, and ex from my experience in doing things like that during meditation, um, things that expend a lot of energy, um, you're gonna wanna eat afterwards you're probably going to want to eat after any of them, but you're going to want to eat afterwards. You're going to want to meditate for a while um, and just, and it's okay if you fall asleep, um, but you're going to want to just release whatever it is and, and ground yourself. And that's part of the reason for eating. Um, you, you want to get grounded. I always had a hard time with it. We were just going over some of my right. notes and I put in a, a, a note in you know one of the rituals or spell castings that I, that I notated in the book that it was hard grounding afterwards. 
Um, easiest way to ground is to eat something. Even if it's just a piece of toast with some jam on it. Just eat something. Because um, it just... I don't know how to explain it. Biologically, it helps. And you probably will be hungry because you just used a lot of energy. Right. So, anyway, I'll not harp on that any longer, but do it. And I don't, I don't know about your experience, but in my experience, I always tend to crave something starchy. Like french fries or... Well, you French know, fries are good. Potato. No French fries are good anytime. You know. But yeah. Um, af- after the fact. And I think there's something about the starch and the complex carbohydrates that like, just kind of brings you down. Yeah, I, well, I hadn't even... your energy. Right. I hadn't thought about it like that. But now that you mention it, I mean, most of the time I would have something that was, well, like a PB&J or something. Right. You know, or a cheeseburger or whatever. So that's... Yeah. The bread is starchy. So other than the cord cutting that you and I did together, like that we helped each other with, Mm -hmm. there was one other time I had done a cord cutting. I didn't even know, like I didn't think of it as a cord cutting because at the time I had never even heard of them yet. It wasn't something that had become popular or, I mean, because you know that there's like always trends, you know, Mm. Um, like right now, Money bowls and the cinnamon spell are really popular. Um, I guess motherfuckers are hurting right now. <laughs> um, but at the time, like, I had never even heard of a, a cord cutting, but I kind of like just made my own because there was somebody that, and back when I was in high school, you know, fell in love with a boy, but we ended up not getting together even though he liked me too. Um, But then when I started practicing witchcraft, he decided he didn't want to be my friend anymore. Okay. And, but didn't, didn't have the balls to tell me himself. Um, He kind of just, he ghosted me. Like before ghosting was even a thing. Ghosted before ghosting was a thing. Yeah. Um, He called me up one day and told me that, you know, he had this, I apparently had this lifelong dream of going to Israel and it was finally happening. He was going on a church mission and you know, he was supposed to be gone for six months and he told me he would write to me while he was gone and he would call me when he got back. And eight months later, I realized that neither one of those things ever happened. And I started looking for him and like maybe I, what was it? it was like 14 years later finally found a phone number and an address and tried reaching out to him and he didn't call me back when I left a message and when I tried calling again the number had been disconnected wow so it was like you know That's weird. and all that time like anytime I thought about him I would cry because I missed my friend right and So one day I was getting ready to move and I was trying to downsize and I was going through this big letter of boxes and came across all these letters and birthday cards and Christmas cards that he had sent me and it didn't feel right to throw them away and it it didn't feel right to burn them. So I got in contact with his brother and asked like, hey, if you know, like it just doesn't feel right to destroy these. Or just treat them as waste because like they're his thoughts and his feelings. Um, if I send them to you, would you make sure they get back to him? And he was like, yeah, sure. So I sent them. I thought I had all of them. But apparently there was one little Christmas card that escaped the mm-hmm. purge. And so later when I was downsizing and I was going through this box of old letters and just like reading everything and then tossing it, I come across this card and it pissed me off so bad that this card was in my house. So I looked up, I had found out that he ran a business at the time. So I took the address of his business, found his home address. You straight up stalked this dude. Um, Put the card in an envelope with, I think it was the business address as the return and his, or no, the business address was the addressee. 
his home address was the return and wrote down some lyrics from a Rihanna song, <laughs> slipped it in the envelope and sent it off. And Joy Lynn was with me when I did this. Mm. And she was like, well, what happens if, you know, the, the address it's going to is not correct? Well, I said, then it goes the to the return. She goes, okay, but what if that one's not correct either? I said, then it goes back to the other one. And she goes, but I said, I don't care what happens to it as long as it doesn't end up back in my hands. And I didn't realize that I had set up a test for myself, or I didn't remember that mm -hmm. I guess I must have set up a test for myself. The little slip of paper that I had written the addresses on, I stuck it back in my wallet. And a few months later, I was looking for something in my wallet and came across the paper. And when I saw it, it was just like, oh. And like the, the memories were there, but not the pain, not the right. hurt, and not the love. Right. It was just like, oh, yeah, I had some really good memories with this person. Oh, well. And just kind of like, you know, so obviously like my shoving it away right. worked. <clears throat> um, but yeah, it was like I didn't realize that that's what I was doing at the time because I had never heard of such right. a thing. It wasn't until like probably the past five years um, that I had actually heard about a cord cutting. Right. Yeah, that's another thing. Um, after doing a cord cutting, you also need to stay away from the individual. Yes, that is hugely important. I, you can't really do a cord cutting with somebody that you're seeing. I mean, you could, but you're just reforming. You, more than likely, you're just going to reform the cord in some manner. Yeah, definitely don't do it, especially if you're sleeping with the person. Yeah, you're just reestablishing it every single time. Which is something that I read in my research. Um, you know, you may not think this uh, or realize it, but, you know, everybody that we've ever slept with, we have have formed a connection with that person. You may, if you are having some real difficulties, you may want to consider doing a cord cutting with, you know, that may, may not be many for some and may be a lot for others. And I'm not judging, but I'm just saying like with those connections, if any of those people were really bad for you, like that toxic toxicity, I mean, if they were really bad for you, you would want to consider it. Like, I'm not saying you need to do a cord cutting with for every single partner you've had. But if there was somebody that was toxic as fuck, just because you haven't thought about them in five years, um, doesn't mean that maybe you shouldn't do a cord cutting of that person. Just right. saying. Because we do swap many energies and mm -hmm. create connections when we make love or whatever you want to call it. Right. But also you can do cord cuttings for things like addictions. Yep. And bad habits. Yep. So if there's a bad habit, like I know for me, procrastination is a huge one. Um, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I never procrastinate anything. Okay. Um, you know, you can do a cord cutting for that where instead of, you know, writing your name on one candle and the other person's name on the other. Oh, yeah, it I would didn't be, even really talk about that. It would My be bad. your name on one candle and the bad habit or the addiction that you're trying to get rid of um, on the other candle so that you're cutting the cord between you and it. And don't freak out if one of the candles burns kind of weird. As long as it... I mean, if you do it tight enough, the string tight enough, um, to where it's secure on the candle, it's going to burn the cord at some point. So like, if it goes sideways, well, then check the ventilation. Dude, like don't I've just seen so many comments of somebody doing uh, this exact spell and 
because of the way they tied it or the, the ventilation, one of the candles pretty much burnt down all the way in like a couple of minutes. But then the other one is still... And the other one is still like going full. Going strong. Um, and it did not burn the string. Like the individual was flipping out about this. And I mean, it just means you didn't prepare it properly. I mean, I don't know what to tell. I mean, I honestly, I, that that's a situation where um, planning and preparation and setup are key. Right. Uh, you know, and, and definitely, like, look at the ventilation. I've had that happen. Like, or I'd have a, uh, if I was doing a ritual that required a candle be lit at the beginning, and then I complete whatever I'm doing, and then the candle continues to burn out, and the ritual is complete once the candle burns out. I placed it in different areas of my room before we moved in together, and like in one spot, it would burn for like a freaking hour and a half. A little freaking candle. Um, and then another spot, like on that little table that mm -hmm. was kind of the, yeah. Um, on that, it would be burnt in 20 minutes right you know, because it was right well right above the vent mm -hmm. and so like pay attention to that kind of stuff because it will um have an effect on the way things progress or the way a candle burns um, right so like and it, it could also be an issue with where the cord is placed because i've seen some versions of a cord cutting where the cord is supposed to go around the wicks of the candles. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some where it's supposed to go around like the middle of the candles. Yeah, which that one I honestly which... don't get because once it burns down, I mean, you're not actually cutting the, cutting cord. the cord. Right. I mean, but I think those ones, because. Okay. Here's, I like the one where we actually you just cut the cord. Yeah. Here's another ver another variation of that particular one. There are some where you're supposed to let the candle burn the cord. And then there are others where you tie the cord around the candles, but then you cut the cord with scissors. And then let them continue to burn down. Yes. Gotcha. But then there's the one like the one that we did um, that we helped each other with where we just found ourselves. and Right. And cut, which that one, that one was really powerful. And I remember when I cut the cord on mine, like I actually felt all of my power and all of my energy come rushing back. And I was in something that I had not been able to do for quite a few years was build a shield. I was immediately able to do that again because my energy had come back. Yeah, you will feel it. You will definitely feel it. Not only um, not only spiritually, but most likely emotionally, too. Like, it'll just be a huge weight off your shoulders, huge sigh of relief. And, I mean, like, I think you remember, like, I, 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 I yeah, did Yeah, I mentioned cry. it earlier. <laughs> like, yeah. I did cry <laughs> when I did mine. Um... Yeah, but that's love spells. And cord cutting. And cord cutting. Oh, I do have a question for you. What's that? And this is something I've been thinking about for quite a while. Um, what has been the most difficult part of the witchcraft journey for you? Not procrastinating. My own consistency. Mm. I mean, when I put it into, I mean, well, for me, I mean, like we talked about, I think in the first episode, um, you know, it's not just about witchcraft for me. Right. Um, it's Wicca and um, it's like anything else that if you don't put the energy into it, not that you lose it, but it just... I don't know how to explain it but that's been the most difficult part is mm -hmm. my is maintaining my own uh, not letting myself be so tired that I just want to sit on the couch and 
binge watch something. Mm. Not sleeping until when I'm when I don't have to go in until late. Not sleeping till ten. Right. When I have to be in at eleven. You know, why didn't I just get up at six and then do something? So that that kind of thing. My own procrastination and that that's been the most challenging part. Um, the second most challenging part was believing that I had the ability to do it. That changed when I was in Michigan. Um, and again, doing more ceremonial, um, I did a, um, I did some ceremonial magic, uh, or began to, um, and manifested some pretty cool shit um, that I was it, it just it was it was um, very emotionally moving um, so yeah my own procrastination because I definitely want to get back to that one of the reasons why I want to hit the lotto so I don't have to work 48 40 <laughs> freaking hours a week you know we've talked about this before okay so in medieval times or before that um life was hard life expectancy was less than 30 i think right some shit like that yeah. um but you know if if you, it just it was I know it was different in the sense that you know they, they you you can you didn't have all the distractions. If you wanted to study, you, if you had access to the books, okay, there's another difficulty. Um, if you had access to the teachings, I mean, you had all the time in the world to do what you needed to do. Right. Now we're all slaves to some company that we have to get. We spend more time at work than we do with our family, waking hours. Right. I mean, we get maybe six to eight hours. Well, not even, because anyway, I'm getting off track again. Yes, I hit my pen. Anyway, I hope you've learned something. I hope we've helped you in some way. Um, we would love to hear from you. Uh, and, and any suggestions or questions or hey, comments too, just try to be respectful. Yeah. So if you like what you see and hear, Hit the like button, subscribe, share it with your friends. If you have any suggestions or questions, you can reach out to us at gettingwitchypodcast at gmail.com. Or you can leave a message on or a comment on the video on YouTube at Getting Witchy. Or you can reach out to us on Instagram at Getting Witchy Podcast. We do also have a Facebook page, Getting Witchy, which, I mean, is you'll know it because it's the same picture as we use on everything else. Have a great night, everybody. Be safe. And I hope you had a great Friday the 13th, by the way. Peace. Peace. Oh, we didn't even talk about the eclipse.